very good afternoon to one and all. Uh, today, uh, I will be presenting my paper that is DNA extraction and sex determination from tea by subjecting it to various uh, chemicals and um, a guide in forensic identification. As we all are aware that forensic uh, science relies mainly on three scientific pathways for human identification, fingerprints, teeth, DNA analysis. Over the last decade, DNA analysis approach has become the gold standard for human identification. The DNA analysis is performed by screening the genetic profile of the victim and matching it with the genetic profile of the potential candidate. Bodies that undergo intentional post-mortem alterations such as carbonization, dissolution, hamper the degradation of DNA due to high temperature and acid pH. Therefore, testing the collection of DNA and sex emission from the human teeth in such conditions could contribute significantly to the field of forensic genetics. So the present research was conducted to evaluate the extraction, amplification, and sex determination of human of DNA from human teeth, which were immersed in three different chemicals. So uh, this was our uh, uh, method. We collected um, uh, of, of teeth and they were immersed in three different um, chemicals and they were divided into three groups. Group one, forming the high group, 25%. Group two, 25% of acetic acid. Group three, 25%. Uh, nitric acid and group four was control that was our oral mucosal cells. As you can see, I have immersed these uh, teeth in three different chemicals. So coming to the methodology, uh, we use two different methods for teeth. I use uh, silica method and uh, we removed the dirt from the surface of the specimen and then they were immersed in the calcification reagents for four days. And then these samples were drawn with mortar and pistol until we got the fine powder. And then it was pen column and the silica in suspension. I did with silica suspension. Then we centrifuged it. And finally, we got the DNA and we collected in the tube. This was for the teeth, this method, silica method. And uh, for our all mucosal cells, we used organic method. Uh, that is uh, the main chemical for organic method. We use phenyl chloroform isomeal alcohol. So here we also collected uh, the mucosal cell using the cytobrush. And then after that, we incubated, um, we used the EDTA, we incubated, and finally we got our DNA palette. So finally, after these two methodology, we got our results. And uh, this was done by uh, agrose gel electrophoresis for the DNA quantity and size distribution. So uh, we got our image by the gel documentation. As uh, we can see here in figure one, we can see the diagram and we can see the DNA. So uh, M is our ladder and these are our base pairs from 250 to 10,000 base pairs. And uh, as I have noted here from one to five is in the control, six to 10 formaldehyde. So we can see from one to five and eight in this picture, the DNA bands are very clear and we could amplify the DNA in first and second group. In this group, in group two, we can see again, the DNA ba bands are visible and uh, we could amplify the DNA in these two, in these three groups. By comparing it with this nitric acid group, we could see that, uh, as we can see here, the trailing of DNA, so it was not uh, that uh, uh, possible, it was denatured DNA in nitric acid group. So after amplifying the DNA, we did the concentration of DNA, which was quantified by nano drop spectron photometer. As we all know, the ratio of DNA is 1.8. So we could see here from group one to group four. As we can see in group one, we have the purest form of DNA compared to the formaldehyde, same purest form of DNA in acetic acid. We are also getting, uh, uh, in few parts, we are getting purest uh, DNA, and in few cases, we are not getting, we are getting impurities. But it is very clear in the new group by nitric acid group that the DNA is not pure, so we could not amplify the DNA. The concentration was not pure. So after doing this, so we did the acting gene 
uh, for all the uh, sample. So we amplified through uh, PCR. So these were the primers which we used for acting gene. And this was a mixture used for PCR. Uh, so uh, we got our final results for the acting gene. As we can see, the figure four, uh, this is the group uh, one to two. As we can see, bands from 100 base pair to 1000 base pair, we can see the bands are very clear. So the acting gene was present here. Uh, in our formaldehyde as an acidic group, it was present, but in nitric acid, we could not find the acting gene there. Uh, so after doing this acting gene, so uh, we had to um, uh, get the sex determination from these uh, uh, teeth. It was a single blind study. So after that, uh, we put this uh, PCR condition for the sex uh, determination and we got our results. As uh, I already discussed that we didn't got the actin gene in nitric acid group also not, it was not possible to amplify the DNA from this group. So uh, as we can see, this is the X and this is uh, Y. So in uh, these cases, uh, like from one to 12, we can see that uh, there are some uh, females as well as males. So we collected the data. So in my oral mucosal uh, group cells, uh, I could uh, and, uh, see that the uh, out of five uh, uh, samples, three were males and two were females. In formaldehyde group, three were males and two females. In acidic acid group, we could only determine two samples out of these two. One was male and female. In nitric acid group, we could not determine the sex in any of the samples. From our study, we could observe that there was degradation of DNA2, which were immersed in 25% of nitric acid, because the identification, amplification, and sex determination was not possible. The DNA that were immersed in formaldehyde, acetic acid, were having intact DNA, which were able to isolate, amplify, and we could determine the sex in all the samples. So to conclude my study, sex determination of teeth by means of PCR is considered to be extremely useful for identification of markedly decayed or skeletonized bodies. Thereby, as an expert, as a forensic expert, one has to be aware of different methods of post-mortem alteration and their effect on DNA isolation and sex determination. Thank you. Thanks.